Hello. I hope you're doing really well. As you can see from the title of this video, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about meditation. Now, if you are a subscriber or you've seen me before, you're probably aware that I tend to be more on the spiritual aspect or the spiritual side of everything right now, which is a little bit different from what and who uh, I used to be three years ago during the pandemic. And I find I should probably say this frequently in my videos. During the pandemic, I spiritually woke up since then i have been extremely spiritual and doing videos about spirituality i have a patreon about spirituality i've changed much of my social media interactions to involve all things spiritual we are at a very interesting point right now in history in humanity and there's not much evidence, unfortunately, for those who are very practical and very dependent on science for everything. <laughs> uh, and don't leave any, any room for anything else uh, outside of hard facts and proven science, which tends to be the majority of people you can't prove spiritual awakening or spiritual anything to anyone and i guess i just realized that if you know anyone or if you've heard about people who go through a spiritual awakening or are currently going through a spiritual awakening process you will hear a common theme which is our lives tend to completely fall apart and the people that were once friends family understood us um, uh, knew us tend to look at us as if we've lost our minds <laughs> which we haven't but spiritual awakening is a very personal experience and unfortunately, as of where we are right now, uh, as a species, you can't prove it to anyone. You can't prove communication with higher intelligence to anyone. You can't prove a Kundalini awakening to anyone. You can't prove consciousness to anyone. And that has been sort of a double-edged sword because it requires faith and it requires trust. Two things that people laugh at right now, well, not everyone, but a good segment of the mainstream would laugh or mock or belittle or just, you know, snub uh, those who claim to have any kind of faith or those who claim to have any kind of trust in any higher power, be it the universe, be it a, a deity, it, it doesn't matter. And I'm trying, I'm, I'm walking on eggshells here <laughs> because I don't want to uh, upset uh, people. I realize that we remain still um, highly triggered as a species. Uh, and social media tends uh, to do that to people. But I decided to shift. A little bit or maybe not shift but rather incorporate practicality and a little bit of evidence uh, to spirituality because of the fact that mainstream Western I'm going to say Western because in the East the Eastern societies tend to be more religious and more of faith than in the West get ready because somebody's going to get triggered by what i'm about to say there is and i used to be one of them guilty as charged there's a segment of the population that seems to be in the mainstream right now 
that are atheists and I'm not lumping anyone together nor am I collectivizing nor am I accusing nor am I poo-pooing nothing I'm just pointing out things that dishearten dishearten people like me and this is going to tie into why I'm here this is a little bit of a long dramatic intro so bear with me the segment of the population that are atheists or call themselves atheists right now in the West or need scientific hardcore evidence for anything, I guess they're also known as secularists or seculars. It's interesting to engage with them as someone who is spiritual. And like I said, I'm an ex-Muslim atheist myself. I still identify as an ex-Muslim atheist. But when you talk about spirituality or consciousness or introduce any concept that is metaphysical, they take it personally, not all of them, the, the vocal ones, <laughs> and I used to be one of them, like I said, and there's an immediate projection that begins to happen and a firing back and forth exchange almost as if you've offended them. Let me give you an example of what it is I'm trying to say. I recently signed up, which is one of the reasons I'm here to tell you, to become uh, certified to teach meditation. So I signed up uh, to a course that views meditation and applies meditation in a more practical manner. So sort of corporate, the corporate world, uh, just you know normal everyday people who don't fall into the category of being spiritual the course itself taps into spirituality every now and then but it is not the main focus unlike my channel and my patreon which tend to scare people away and I'm here to acknowledge this I'm quite aware that spirituality is frightening <laughs> because it is the unknown, it is the unproven and whatever it is and the ununderstood, not understood. So whatever it is we don't understand, whatever it is we can't make sense of, we judge, we dismiss, we snub, we mock. That's, that's part of the human condition. But I signed up to this course and they had a Facebook group. And I've been very turned off by social media because of the level of projection and triggering that I am witnessing, that I have been witnessing since, since I woke up. And I used to be someone who used to get triggered on social media, okay? So I'm not othering. <laughs> I joined that group, very excited. I posted a question to the designer of the course that I am taking to become certified in meditation. And the question was, I have a spiritual approach towards meditation rather than a practical one. Because I woke up during the pandemic and I sort of lean uh, that way. And I've always leaned that way. I just denied, denied it. And, and I went with the atheist uh, mainstream. So how do you professionally debate or how do you professionally approach someone who labels you a witch because you are spiritual and you do strange things or you meditate and you talk about consciousness and seeing numbers and seeing colors? Uh, how do you professionally respond to people who mock you, who snub you, who laugh at you, call you names, and get triggered by you because you have a different approach towards something than they do. I put that question on there. It took a time for the moderators to approve it, and they did, and I was very excited because I'm like, yay! <sighs> I can relax and breathe here, and all is good. Well, I received two responses. The first response was basically telling me that I sort of agree with it, sort of not. Basically telling me that your relationship with higher intelligence is personal. 
keep it to yourself. Don't go out sharing it with others, which immediately shocked me because I've built a YouTube channel. I've built a Patreon. I'm building towards making spirituality more mainstream than it is. And one of the things I currently dislike as someone who I consider myself, you know, on the enlightenment path, on the spiritual path, and I do receive downloads and I do communicate with higher consciousness, you know, not every day, <laughs> but I do. I kind of want to go mainstream. Why can't spirituality go mainstream? Why must it be tabooed? Why must we hide? When a lot of depravity, sorry, uh, right now has become okayed and accepted. Why must spiritual people not discuss and not talk and, and keep their relationship with any sort of higher entities or how we connect or our spiritual hygiene or our spiritual practices private? Especially right now in a time where the collective is waking up. So I, I, I get the point of, you know, don't go telling people I'm blabbing, which is all I've been doing here on my YouTube channel, which is why people call me a witch and laugh and mock and unfriend me. And that's fine. You have a right to your own opinion without me getting upset. Someone once said to me, what anyone else thinks of you and their opinion of you is none of your business. So I tend to apply that. But why? is my question. Why must we remain on the sides, tabooed, shamed, and pr in private, and, and not discuss anything? And the person that made that comment actually compared your relationship with your higher self or how you connect with the divine to your relationship, your sexual relationship with your partner. And uh, that's, I don't agree with that comparison at all. Um, I'm not saying, you know, people, no, people do have sex in public, but I don't go out in public and, and start doing odd things. I'm just trying to reach out to the segment of the population of humanity right now that is waking up, that probably doesn't know what the hell is going on. And yes, waking up is a very personal experience. I guess the evidence in science would be called anecdotal. You can't prove it as of yet. Having said that, mm. I used to be an anesthetist, medical doctor, specialist. I've seen anesthetists that are now acknowledging consciousness and trying to scientifically find a way to preserve consciousness after our physical bodies dissolve. So that was one comment. And I'm not here to bitch about comments on Facebook. I'm just trying to figure out where we are as a species and point out some of our issues with, with the hopes to reach people. So that was one comment. The other comment was from an atheist and a very, very virulent atheist. Um, yes. Meaning, they will attack you if you go anything religious, anything spiritual, anything you cannot prove through science, through that narrow spectrum. And yes, science is narrow because science has yet to prove a lot of things and science continues to evolve. So having a rigid mindset towards science is in itself funny because science isn't rigid. Science is, is in a constant state of evolution. Science is in a constant state of wondering. So their response was immediately dismissive. Again, keep it to yourself. I, myself, as a secular, what did they call themselves? As a, basically like a very negative description of being secular. So they are acknowledging that they are negative because they are secular, because they have the atheist mindset, that there is no way that you could prove anything to them that has to do with spirituality or metaphysics, or that is outside of the main uh, accepted norms right now of science and uh, research and you know your main five senses. So I said, you know what, thank you. Thank you for this response. 
and I myself uh, identify as an ex-Muslim atheist, very friendly, and I liked their comment. And uh, you know, and I said, had I uh, not gone through it myself during the pandemic, um, I wouldn't have ever believed anyone talking to me about anything, consciousness or spirituality. And they fired back at me with almost an attack. Actually, not almost, it was an attack. Um, to the point that I actually left the group and decided to continue on my path alone. Uh, there's no way you can prove anything to me, just keep it to yourself, blah, 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 and uh, it's nonsense. Like, other than actually calling me a name, I was, uh, I was very disencouraged to remain in that group. And it's fascinating to me because it turned into an argument about them being right at all cost and me uh, being wrong because science right now is unable to prove this. And I'm sure if in you look into the fields of the universe and quantum physics and quantum everything, you will find that science still is unable to answer a lot of questions. So to, be, to become virulent and rabid in attacking people who are introducing concepts or who might have solutions of, or who have tapped into the universe or who have perhaps communicated with the universe and shit <laughs> all over them because they don't fit in the little box of atheism and secularism is fascinating. Since atheism and secularism right now is, is behaving more like a, I don't know, a cult, a, a religion in its own, they have adopted all the qualities that they condemn. The rigidity in thought, the need for things to be exactly one way and no other way. So I, uh, I just wanted to bring that up. And I do uh, realize that I've spent 17 minutes blabbing about something that happened to me on a personal level that might sound like I'm bitching or trying to be dramatic, but I'm not. Because I myself am trying to find out why I'm here. Why what happened to me during COVID happened and how I can help other people without necessarily entering some kind of personal conflict over ideas or wars uh, on, on either social media or on a personal scale. Which is why a lot of people that have woken up spiritually <laughs> remain in hermit mode. I think a lot of us are still observing uh, how mainstream is behaving. And as mainstream continues to reject anything outside of mainstream, mainstream is going to remain in a very narrow scope, probably going nowhere. That's just my two cents for it. So now the real reason I am here and the title of this video, which is a meditation and five evidence-based benefits to meditation. Like I just told you, I tend to have a spiritual approach towards meditation. Having said that, there are plenty, plenty people out there who have a very practical approach towards meditation. So please make sure that you do check the description because you're going to find a lovely evidence-based scientific backed article in the form of a link. And I would also urge you to do your own research as always. I believe there is over uh, 1,400 articles that back up all the evidence of meditation in a scientific manner. The first benefit is that meditation increases self-awareness and aids in mindfulness. There is a little bit of a difference between meditation and mindfulness. Mindfulness means 
literally living in the moment not thinking about tomorrow and what tomorrow is going to bring which usually brings on a lot of anxiety as well as not living in the past and what the past did to you and all these horrible things that happened to you in the past which keep you stuck in a state of sadness so it does increase self-awareness so if you're a person who engages in meditation you will notice that your awareness of your own self your own thoughts your own actions will increase as well as your awareness of the people around you the surroundings and this is where I say you begin to understand subtle energy so that is one lovely benefit that has been proven scientifically to be a result of meditation the second benefit is is a reduction in stress as well as a reduction in anxiety two things that science has shown to reduce your immune system and lower your overall immune response so when you meditate especially if you're doing it on a regular basis for a good amount of time you will notice that there are health benefits especially in fighting infections if you're a person who gets sick a lot it will boost your immune system because of the lowering of anxiety and stress as well as the stress hormones and their negative impacts on your immune system another scientifically proven benefit of meditation that i personally have experienced myself is increase pain management so if you're a person who struggles with something like chronic pain the more you meditate the more you will find you will gain control over your chronic pain and thus improving your mood improving your life and having a general positive impact on you then we come into the fun stuff meditating especially if you do it on a regular basis increases productivity by up to 30 percent and this is why you i don't know if you've noticed or not but meditation is starting to enter the corporate world right now on a massive scale people who are in charge of big companies or law firms or whatever big are bringing in the tool of meditation as a resource for their employees because it has been found through research to increase productivity by up to 30 percent and that is absolutely amazing because increased productivity means increased revenue the last fifth benefit that i wanted to bring to you today not that it's just the five benefits meditation has hundreds of benefits but the last one is that it helps in resolving or getting over addictions overcoming addictions whatever the addiction is for me i wasn't addicted but i used to have to have a glass of wine every day and that stopped uh, two years ago and let me give you a little tip it was communication from my guides that made me stop wine you can raise your eyebrows if you want but you can also stop weed just before i stopped wine i was also using weed to overcome chronic pain and to sleep which meditation also helps improve your sleep wow i just added three more points to my five points but yes overcoming addictions so me personally alcohol and weed um, whatever social media addictions and that has also been proven 
scientifically to be a benefit of meditation all the more reason to perhaps consider incorporating meditation into your life the other thing that meditation tends to do and we're probably on to point seven now if not eight or nine i should have made this video 10 benefits <laughs> of meditation but it increases compassion something very much lacking nowadays including in the meditation group that i just signed into and then left because i was attacked <laughs> for my spirituality there's no compassion and it also helps you take in other people's perspectives which is something i couldn't find in that group either so it's not just my way or the highway and i'm going to have a fight with you if you don't agree with me because i'm right and you're wrong meditation gets rid of all of that nonsense and let me close by adding one more benefit that benefit is meditation causes an overall reduction in brain aging all right guys this video turned out much longer than i was planning and for that i apologize but i had to put in my little rant in the beginning so i hope you enjoyed it like i said i am hopefully by the end of this month going to be a certified meditation instructor and i'm trying to balance out spirituality with practicality so let's see how it goes you're going to find my patreon linked in the description have a lovely day and thank you for watching please like please share please subscribe